Welcome back to our training video series. In this one, this video, we're going to cover topics, which is the second major component of My Curator. You remember in Sources, we told My Curator what is it that My Curator is going to read. Uh, we set up some Google Alerts, a Twitter search, we're going to attach some blogs, you could add news articles, news feeds, etc. In this area, we're going to create a new topic, and topics are all about telling my curator what it is to look for when it's reading through all that material, all those articles. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a name. I call this content curation is my topic. First field is topic search one. Each of these terms must be in the article. This is a very restrictive filter. Remember, we're telling my curator, look through all of these articles and find only certain ones I want to see. Now, if I've set up a Google alert, which I did on content curation. Well, this has already been handled by Google. But if I'm also reading blogs or news items, there may be lots of other articles and, and postings that have nothing to do with content curation. So I need to tell it not to look for articles unless they have the words content and curation. I could put quotes around this. And we'll see that in the next field to make it a phrase where the two words have to be together. You can use upper or lower case, it's going to turn everything into case. And it also matches short phrases. So if I did content curate without an E, I would also get curate and curation and curates and all the other root endings of this root. But I'm just going to focus on curation today. Topic search two, all of these terms must be, at least one of these terms must be in the article. Unlike the first one where everything had to be there, this one, all I need is one of these to match and I've got a hit on the article. So first I check are the terms content and curation in the article. And now I'm going to check each of these terms. And rather than type them in, I've uh, put together a whole list. You'll notice some of these are quoted. Content curation together is a match. Content aggregation, discovery, business, B2B. I could list hundreds of terms in here. All it has to do is get a hit on one of these, and that article is going to go through to the next step. So what you've done is you have sources. You're filtering them with topic search one, where both of those terms must be in, or any term there. Then one of these terms must be in. I can also exclude words. So I can say, if I put the word jobs here, I don't want to see anything about jobs. You know, there's always sorts of jobs boards. I can. This is very exclusionary. All it does have to do is have the word, any of the words you put in here, and we're going to ignore the article. The other key filter is article length. Many, many times you're going to get lots of results of articles that are very short. So I typically use like about 200 words. That usually leads me to an article that's fairly long. Uh, you know, these are words that um, it's going to exclude stop words. So, you know, these are sort of 200 word article or more. The other thing I can do is skip domains. Uh, for instance, like I mentioned, jobs boards, they show up in a lot of searches. So the content curation, you know, there's companies out there looking for content curators and, and will have experience in content curation. So you might exclude some, like I know indeed.com shows up in job boards a lot. Uh, you know, if you see other uh, uh, domains showing up, you know, with articles you just don't want to see, you can add them in here. And again, this is just the domain part, you know, monster.com, something like that you might put in here. So what we've done up to this point now is set up and told my curator, look at every article and make sure it matches this screen. If it doesn't have content curation, if it doesn't have one of those words in the long list that follows here, then kick it out. If it has one of these words in the topic excluded, kick it out. If it's shorter than 200 words, kick it out. If it has a domain, if it's coming from indeed.com, kick it out. So now we've put a filter or a screen on all of the articles. Now what's coming through are things that are roughly about content curation. And now we're going to have our relevance engine can start looking at that, can start using machine learning to find out what's there. I could actually tell it to just filter, which means any article that meets this information is going to get posted to my training page or in the future my active page and I don't do any AI learning techniques. That would just create a, a pure sort of aggregation of articles that meet this basic screen. Normally you're just going to keep this on relevance so you can train the system. 
The status is starting at training, and what that means is all of the articles that get through this filter and then get through the training engine, the relevance engine, are going to show up in the training page. And you remember we set that up in our initial options video. The next thing we do is, what category are we going to assign this to? If the articles that are coming through meet this screen, the classifier says they're good, then I can make this an active topic and it will start posting good articles to my blog site. But where does they go? Well, first of all, you tell it which category, or you can create a new category by typing in a name, and this will override any category that's sitting up here. So you can create a new category called News. I've already set up a category called Content Curation, and that's where the I'm going to send my good articles. But I could create some other category right on the fly here if I hadn't thought of it ahead of time. Again, depending on your theme, this may be showing up just in a widget. It may be mixed in with your blog posts. You may have set it up so that uh, certain categories are on your menu items and they can click on news and see news. The other thing we do is we want to tag these articles as they come in. And with this click here, I'm going to use all of these search two words, all of these words I put up here, including these phrases, as my tags. If these are words that I want to see in the content, then it just follows that these are the sort of tags or key phrases and words that I want to bring out of my articles and put in my tag cloud. So by clicking here, all of these become possible tags. So when an article comes through, it's marked as good, gets posted on the site. If any, each one of the terms that are here, each one that's in the article is going to be added to a tag. So one article may end up with one, two, three, you know, four, five, six, seven tags on it. You can also, though, sign it to a single tag if you wanted to. And if you'd set up some tags, you could set a single tag just for this, like, for instance, again, news. But usually the category handles that, and using the keywords up here as tags gives you a much richer set of tags for each article. Finally, what are we going to uh, source? What, is gonna, what topic? This topic is going to be reading sources. Which source? We set up that category, curation. That's the one we're going to read. We could read multiple sources. If we'd set up five different sources, we could click on all of them and have my curator read through every one. But every source category has multiple source items, and my curator is going to read through every one of those items. Remember, we set up a Google alert, a Twitter search, and a blog in the curation. It's going to read every one of them and go through the process of first filtering, then using the relevance engine to classify and then posting articles initially all to our training page. When you read our next video series about training will be the one that you can follow to find out how to train the system and then how to make it active and have good articles go to the main page. I'm going to go ahead and save these options. And now I've set up a new topic. If I go to my topics thing, here I see the new topic. If I click on the topic name, I can go in and edit the topic. So I can make changes over time. I can add keywords, exclude things. This is a very dynamic uh, uh, you know, uh, system. And whenever I make changes here, it's going to automatically affect how my curator views the, the set of articles coming through from the sources. I can also change my sources by editing sources. So if I added a new set of sources called, uh, you know, Newsfeed, I could come in here and click on it, and my topic, content curation, would not only read my curation feeds, but any feeds that I'd set up in Newsfeed. So that's basically it to set up a topic. Now I've told my curator what to read. I've told it what to do with what it reads. Now it's going to start reading. In the background, already, it's going to, as soon as it kicks off, remember in the options, we told it to read every three hours, I think. It's going to start finding articles and putting them in the training page. And that'll be the subject of our next video. Thanks.